This is the connected mode in the latest release of Tetris Effect, and there's a really cool story behind the person on the team at Enhanced Games who was in charge of designing it, as he went from being a fan of the original release to having a leading role in making the next release happen. My current role is multiplayer lead game designer. Uh, I designed the game rules of each mode in this update and managed balance or parameter things. Uh, with the help of other game designers and team members. So this is Tomohiro Tatajima, better known by his online screen name, Green Tea, who at a young age was already a prodigy at many different versions of Tetris, becoming only the ninth player in the world to achieve the TGM3 Grandmaster rank using the classic rotation rule. And after winning several of the classic Tetris monthly online tournaments for NES Tetris, he decided to travel from Japan all the way to America to compete in the classic Tetris World Championships. Little did he know how life-changing the trip would end up being. So. How did you start working with Tetris Effect? Um, the beginning of the story was at the Classic Tetris World Championship 2018. In the tournament venue, there was a side tournament area where you could try Tetris Effect before its launch. I tried the game for the first time in VR and I soon fell in love with it. Some of the key team members of Tetris Effect, including lead producers Tetsuya Mizuguchi and Mark McDonald, were there to promote the game, and Green Tea got to meet them personally. After coming home from his debut at the Classic Tetris World Championships with an impressive third place finish, Green Tea set his sights on mastering Tetris Effect, putting special effort into the fittingly titled Master Mode, where the goal is to clear 300 lines as the pieces get faster and faster. Towards the end, things get almost impossibly fast, but not only was Green Tea able to to be the first person in the world to complete it, catching the attention of Enhance, he also managed to do it again in absolute style by getting all the way to 299 lines and then setting up a Tetris line clear to put him three lines over the top for the maximum possible amount of lines in the mode. Several months later, when I, it was time to look for a job after my graduation from university, I couldn't get the games out of my head, so I applied for work at Enhance dreaming to create emotional, interactive content like Tetris. Much to my joy, the President Mizuguchi-san warmly welcomed me and I started working there. It was a big fortune that I could be a member of the project to make a uh, multiplayer expansion on Tetris Effect. So Tetris Effect Connected's multiplayer modes have a ton of cool stuff in them, which I've covered in the other deep dive videos, but the Connected mode is really the flagship mode of this release. It's an ambitious format that doesn't pit players against each other, but instead has them work as a team. So what was the inspiration behind the Connected mode? Um, as an enhanced team, we would like to make something special and suitable for multiplayer version of Tetris Effect. The original game's atmosphere is never like something that hurts others. Also, its community is really warm and friendly, so we thought it is best to make our main mode non-competitive and something which can connect people to other people. Uh, this concept led us to a three-player cooperative mode with the player's matrices will combine or be connected into one. So in the connected mode, three teammates challenge a series of bosses in succession. This mode features 24 different boss attacks, which we call blitzes. We've created a wide variety of blitzes, such as making your matrix dirty, modifying the shape of your tetrimino, giving you a new rule, and more. Do you have a favorite blitz? Um, my favorite blitz is Squeeze. Uh, it appears in late game, so you need to defeat a number of uh, previous bosses first. In this blitz, the area you can place Tetriminos will be squeezed to fewer clubs, restricting your freedom of placement. I feel so much fun in maintaining the edge of your matrix high by strategically making use of next and the hold cube. In between surviving blitzes, the players have a way to fight back. By clearing lines, they slowly fill up a connected zone meter below their playfield. Tetris line clears, T-spins, and other standard bonus maneuvers help speed up the process. When the zone meter is filled up, the beat of the background song drops, and all the matrices fuse
fused together into one giant version of Tetris Effect Zone. Completed lines now stay on the screen, and the goal now is to work together to fill up as many lines on the board as possible. Each player takes their turn placing pieces one by one on the playfield. Your piece lights up when it's your turn to go. It's best to try and figure out what your plan is so you don't hold up things too long when it's your turn to go, and to keep an eye on what the other players are doing so you don't mess up where they're trying to put their next piece. You don't need to worry too much about creating holes because magic minnows occasionally appear and you can easily recover holes. The magic minos are bright purple, and when you place them, they push down any blocks below them until there are no gaps left. They can help a lot in resolving a hole buried at the bottom or recovering from a mistake. When the time runs out or one player can't place their piece anywhere within the playfield, the zone is over and all the lines are added together into a giant attack that adds a bunch of lines of white garbage to the boss's matrix. When the boss tops out, it's been defeated. So now it was time to try out the connected mode, and joining Green Tea and I for the session was Kirby703, a world record holder for the zone and the namesake of the 21 line curb Triss. She had previously joined me to try out the zone battle mode, but told me afterwards that this was the mode in the demo that she was most looking forward to playing with other people. And immediately, Kirby got off to a roaring start with two all clears, quickly filling up our zone charge so we could enter the zone. <laughs> <laughs> You're too fast, too fast. But then she did something unexpected. Nice. Wait, what the heck? Huh? Who is blue? Me. I did that. Oh. Did you know it was all gonna fall down? Yes. What? How? <laughs> uh, I played this a little bit before. <laughs> Our showing of it. So it turns out that when you enter the zone, the material already in the matrices sinks down in a cascade to remove all the gaps. This feature was added because without it, players would have to deal with previous holes on each of the rows from all three of the boards, which would make it really hard to clear lines. So the strategy before entering the zone is just to throw a bunch of stuff on the screen. <laughs> That's what I did. All right, zone coming. Time to spam to the left, right, and center. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I came up with the strat, it's amusing. But as Kirby and I had fun spamming pieces down before the zone, I noticed out of the corner of my eye that Green Tea wasn't doing the same. You, you just see, like, Green Tea's board looks perfect, and then Kirby and I just have just a mess. <laughs> <laughs> And Green Tea told me later that there are two reasons for this. The first is that if you use the strategy too much before entering the zone, there's a chance your board could be very spiky and run the risk of snagging a piece. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> so bumpy. All right, I have some room over on my side if you need to dump anything. That's okay. I'll just magic me to it down later. The second reason is that any lines you complete in the zone because of the initial cascade, or from magic minos pushing down pieces to clear lines, add very little power to the attack compared to lines filled in manually. So while these game mechanics can save you in a pinch, it's best not to get in the habit of using them all the time because against the harder bosses, you're gonna need all the attack power you can get. So as we continued playing, we started encountering the blitzes. Huh. Some of the early ones weren't too hard. Uh-oh. Well, that wasn't hard. That made the board better. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mine just gave me more of a well. There was another one that took away the hard drop. Push down point time. Harry Hong will love it. <laughs> As we kept going, though, the blitzes got a bit harder. Ah. Okay, so bump up is really dangerous if you have a high stack. <clears throat> yes. Ooh, dangerous. Oh, yikes. One of the funnest ones was the Mega Minos, which allowed Green Tea to score a Tetris line clear with a square. Oh, I got the big one. Giant Tetris. Overall, playing the connected mode was a blast. Nice teamwork. Yeah. Yeah, all right, all ready for the Tetris. Yes. Boom. 142 yeah, nice attack. 142. The only disappointment at the end was that we were only able to play against the level one bosses in the demo. How would you describe the final boss? Uh, I, I don't want to spoil anything about it now, but the final boss of Connected Mode 
should be most intense and challenging and at the same time should be most fun to play. But now I don't have to wait any longer to find out as Tetris Effect Connected has finally been released. And now that everything is launched, they're also debuting a special mode that goes live once a week where a fourth player can actually play as the boss. In this mode, the fourth player toggles between filling up their blitz meter to launch attacks and playing in defense mode, which is the only way to clear away the white lines of garbage sent over from the connected zone attacks. Anyways, this wraps up the final of the deep dive videos. If you've watched them all, thanks for joining me. And thanks to Kirby and Green Tea for taking part. And thanks to Enhance for making this all possible.